Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. South Africa's energy regulator dropped something of a bombshell this week when it released a consultation paper on new renewable energy feed-in tariffs. Engineering News Editor Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the development and the fallout. Terence, welcome to Second Take. What are the refit tariffs and what did NERSA have to say about them this week? Well, the refit tariffs are really an uh, incentive tool to get the renewable industry uh, going in South Africa. They're used in many other countries. Some countries use refit tariffs. Others set, you know, targets in terms of we must have a certain amount of energy coming from renewable sources. We went with the refit route, which uh, uh, we went through a process in 2008, 2009, where the, the rates were debated, there were public hearings. And in 2009, in March, the first round of refit tariffs were approved. And then in, uh, later in that year, around October, the second round of refit tariffs were approved. And that really provided the foundation for some confidence amongst the uh, developers of renewable energy technologies, whether it's wind, uh, solar, landfill gas, biogas, biomass. There's a whole range of these technologies, mostly over a megawatt. Uh, that gave them the sort of confidence to move ahead. Now, there are a number of other things that have to be put in place before renewable energy projects can go ahead. And there, there was a lot of fuzziness around that. But the one thing that was stable were these, were, were these refit tariffs. And that really got people, you know, doing their me wind measurements, getting their masts up, gave them sort of the basis to move ahead because they felt that they would uh, eventually get fairly favourable tariffs. I think some people call them a subsidy. Uh, the <laughs> that's not how the renewable industry sees it, but they are a f a quite a lot higher than what the prevailing tariff in South Africa would be. But then there, there's also the argument that if you see the, the trajectory of prices, there's actually that gap will be narrowing uh, over time. But yes, they, they are a rate that the, the wind producer or the uh, biomass or the solar energy producer will get, um, and it's a secured thing for 20 years. So, and, and in this context, it was a fairly favorable um, tariff. And NERSA this week, NERSA always said, we're going to review these on a yearly basis. They didn't do that review in 2010, because there was felt that was the year that we're going to get our first renewable uh, feed-in tariff projects off the ground. That didn't happen. There were a lot of delays. Uh, the, the, the power purchase agreements and the procurement process never did come out in 2010. So they felt they, they couldn't delay that review any further. And this week, the bombshell was that they're going to uh, propose a major cut in those refit rates. Some of the projects, some of the technologies like wind, which would be the main early mover, I, I, I think, it's around 25% cut, which is a large cut. For other projects, uh, solar trough and uh, other solar technologies, PV, uh, photovoltaic, the cut is closer to f uh, or over 40% that's proposed. So you can see it's a, it's a major game changer. And what has been the response from the developers and other observers? Well, developers are fuming <coughs> because, you know, they haven't, we haven't seen even one uh, power purchase agreement signed. There's been this promise, this, this, this sort of uh, low-hanging, dripping roast <laughs> sort of held out to developers of the renewable energy feeding tariff. They've really gone and spent a lot of money in preparing their projects. The wind guys alone estimate that they've uh, spent about 400 million rand at risk to try and do all, to get their projects refit ready. And uh, th those projects, as they're getting refit ready, would uh, sort of bid into the first round of renewable feed-in tariff uh, request for proposal, which is going to be issued we were any day now um, from the National Treasur Treasury and the DOE. Um, and, th okay, that was going to be limited to about 1,025 megawatts, but about 700 megawatts of that was going to come from wind. So there was a lot of work behind the scenes, a lot of investment, plus we had the integrated resource plan uh, process, which showed that there's going to be, okay, the first round is fairly small, but a fairly sizable amount of renewable energy coming into South Africa's generation mix over the next 20 years. In fact, we haven't seen the, the, the documentation, but the, the, it was confirmed by Cabinet last week that renewable energy will be 42% of the new mix, not, the, you know, not, the, not, even, not including the historical mix, but of what is developed between now and 2030 will be renewable energy, solar, wind, the whole gamut of projects, um, which would be about 17,000 megawatts of, uh, of power. Uh, capacity. Not that that uh, is available all the time, but it's, it's, it's a sizable investment and most of it would come from the private sector. So you can imagine the developers are taken aback. They say shocked, uh, horrified 
by this development, especially because not one single project PPA has been signed. On the other, on the other side, people that are more skeptical of renewable and its role in the mix are saying, you know, these, these, um, these tariffs were always much too high, overly generous. In fact, uh, I think the renewable guys would also say, look, they were high, but it was there to sort of take out the risk, uh, to lower the risk temperature, especially for the early movers who are taking sort of a leap of faith into, uh, into the unknown. And therefore, we did need uh, sort of favorable returns. So, uh, the, the, so there's a mixed reaction, but mostly uh, the reaction has been negative. How do you think the first refit procurement round should now proceed? Well, I think it would be very unfair to integrate the 2011 tariffs into the first round. I think we need to put renewable energy onto a firm footing. We need to make this place look attractive for in private investors. It's already there's been so many uncertainties, so many delays in getting not just renewable projects, but all energy projects off the ground. I think we need a, a sort of a confidence builder. Yes, <coughs> as consumers, we're going to be paying a little bit over the odds, but you know it's only for 1,025 megawatts, so it's a small it's a small amount in the bigger scheme of things, and we must mustn't forget that Eskom's actually already been recovering that tariff from us. Those 25 percent a year increases between 2010 and 2013 are based not on 2011 refit rates, but on the 2009 refit rate. So either we must get more than the 1,025 megawatts that's proposed in the first round, which is one way of looking at it. But I think more, the, the better way is just to say, let's use the promulgated rates. Let's create some certainty for the first round. Let's create some confidence. Let's put ourselves on a winning wicket. Let's get the investors really looking at South Africa again. And yes, we will review the rates and we do need to moderate the refit rates, but not for the first round. Terence, thank you very much. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Led by Martin Kremer, Mining Weekly's bureaus in Perth, Johannesburg and Toronto deliver unrivaled global coverage of the resources industry and the companies shaping it. Kremer Media's Mining Weekly for mining news around the clock.